Smartphones. We all love them, we all hate them, and we all have them. Making personal computers with internet access that can fit in your pocket seems to be a very profitable business. Just look at Apple. They created the modern smartphone as we know it, and right now they're literally the most valuable company in the world. Good for them, right? Well, some people see it as an issue. You see, the majority of the biggest tech companies in the world are based in the West, or specifically the Silicon Valley in the United States. This annoys some people, or in particular, the country of Russia and its government. Ever since the Cold War, the United States have always been in a competition with the Soviet Union, with each country trying to outdo each other in the arms race and technology development. And it was actually pretty close for a long while. Even though the Cold War is considered to have ended with the collapse of the USSR, the country of Russia was always considered to be the heir to the USSR's status as a superpower and the main opposing force to Western hegemony. Russia has struggled a lot to keep that title up though, enduring the difficult transition from communism to capitalism, becoming broke, being plagued by a period of increased gang activity, and struggling with omnipresent political corruption and lack of economic growth. All of these factors haven't made Russia a country that could keep up with the West that well anymore regarding the development of technology. The arms race, sure, Russia has a rich military heritage and history and it has been doing pretty well, but as far as making anything related to computers goes, be it hardware or software, Russia's attempts have not only been not very successful, but actually quite embarrassing. Especially considering the fact that Russia doesn't support their IT industry that well and how many talented Russian IT specialists actually end up immigrating and working in the Silicon Valley, doing wonders for the American economy. It's all just very sad and ironic. In today's video, I decided to tell the story about Russia's failed attempts at creating their own smartphone, which they apparently tried to make in order to really show Apple who's boss. Well, technically, the attempt to create the smartphone was not failed and they actually made three iterations of it. But if barely selling any devices, making no profit and then selling the company to the Chinese sounds like a success to you, then sure. And of course, just like with basically any story like this coming out of Russia, there will be wasted billions of taxpayer money thrown somewhere in there. Buckle up my friends, because in today's video we're going to be talking about Yota Phone, the Russian government's infamous failed smartphone. The Yota phone was created by a Russian tech and telecommunications company known as Yota, which was established in 2007. Yota is mainly a mobile carrier nowadays, providing communication and mobile internet services for the Russian people. But they used to do all sorts of things back in the day, including multiple attempts to create several mobile devices. Now before we get into this, I need to clarify. Technically, Yota is a private company, so the Russian government isn't completely responsible for the creation of the Yota phone. However, Russian governmental tech conglomerate Rostec owned a huge stake in the shares of Yota at the time, and the phone was developed and funded with the help and the support of the Russian government. Yota devices have also been repeatedly shown to the Russian president by governmental officials and were presented as the Russian answer to Western technology. Not only that, but the technologies used in the Yota phone then went further to fund a few more failed tech projects created by the Russian government using taxpayer money. So the connection is definitely there. The first time the Yota phone appeared in the public eye was the year of 2010, when the head of the Rostec governmental conglomerate showed President of Russia Dmitry Medvedev a prototype of the so-called first Russian smartphone. The prototype showed to the president actually didn't work in any way though, which Medvedev himself actually pointed out. <laughs> I like it to be honest, I mean they literally just made a brick you can't even turn on and interact with and were like, yeah cool, let's just, uh, this is good enough, let's just show this to the president. Anyway, you might have noticed something interesting about the phone in this clips, which actually is the entire gimmick of the first Russian smartphone. Yoda phone was presented as a revolutionary, innovative product that will change the smartphone game forever, and the reason for that is because it had two screens. 
Yes, that's right. That was essentially the entire idea. The Yoda phone would be just like any other regular smartphone in the front, but in the back it was going to have a second screen, made with the e-ink technology commonly used in ebooks, essentially allowing you for a more comfortable experience when using your phone for reading. Basically, the revolutionary product that Yoda came up with was a regular Android smartphone with an Amazon Kindle stuck to the back. Nothing short of genius. The phone was promised to be entirely built and assembled in Russia. Well, almost. Uh, spoiler alert, that did not happen. The Yoda phone was supposed to have 4G support and was scheduled to release in 2011 with a price tag of about 25 to 30 thousand rubles. So about 800 to 900 dollars at the time, which is fucking insane if you ask me. What were they thinking? Unsurprisingly enough, the Yoda phone release did not meet the deadline and the phone was actually officially revealed only three years later at the CES 2013 trade show, at which it was actually pretty successful. Ebooks were kind of a fresh fad at the time and the idea was actually pretty novel and some people actually liked it. For example, the Autophone won CNET's award for the hottest mobile device of the show. On the flip side, during the show, concerns already have been voiced by people in the field, saying that the market for such a smartphone as the Autophone is just very very niche and it probably will not sell that well. Well, needless to say, Apple was not really fussed about the release of the Yoda phone, as Medvedev said they're gonna be. Apple not Apple the phone came out in December 2013, and it wasn't all that great. The reviews pointed out that the phone's specifications were not really comparable to other Android devices in the market, and the phone was way less powerful than the flagship phones of that year. The main gimmick of the phone was also heavily criticized. The reviewers pointed out that the e-ink screen on the back was of pretty bad quality and refreshing. Rate. Moreover, the screen was not touch responsive and you could only control the back screen with a weird gesture system. The second screen's functionality was also super limited, as the phone actually had zero third-party support for applications utilizing the second screen. The device also shipped with an outdated version of Android and to top it all off, it was being sold for a retail price of 500 euros, which was actually comparable to the prices of flagship devices like the Samsung Galaxy S4 at the time. Moreover, the build quality wasn't anything to write home about. All of this, as well as the company essentially having zero brand recognition and being new to the market, was basically setting up the Yoda phone to be a commercial failure, which it did end up being. Only about 40,000 units were sold worldwide, and with the device being very expensive to produce due to the uniqueness of its internal workings, it basically didn't make any profit. Oh, and the phone was actually fully produced in China by the way, so it was never fully Russian made as promised. What's funnier is that seeing the phone perform so terribly only pushed the company to start working in a second generation immediately. The Yoda Phone 2 was unveiled in February 2014, literally just two months after the first generation was released. Bruh. Who does that? Not the best look in my opinion, showing as a new company that your product's longevity is literally just two measly months. The Yoda Phone 2 presentation was kinda hilarious, it was essentially Yoda trying their hardest to be Apple, throwing the keynote events and even making some moving uh, high budget advertisements. <laughs> Apart from whatever that was, they also made this very weird sort of preachy commercial that was just way too deep was for no reason whatsoever. Слышать, смотреть, любить. С одной стороны быть свободным. Общаться с одной стороны. А что если Что если мы просто привыкли и не видим ничего с другой? Йотафон. Телефон с двух сторон. 
you could clearly tell that the company decided to go all in with the second generation and to put a lot of effort into the marketing and essentially pretend like the first generation just did not exist. This time, this time guys, we will actually make it properly. Still produced in China though. Yoda thought that this time the phone actually is going to be becoming a hit in the West and they actually made a whole bunch of videos on YouTube in English describing how the smartphone should be used. Yoda phone has two handy always on screen widgets to help you organize your time. Calendar will show you the current date while next event is a friendly reminder of what you have to do in the near future. Wait, that sounds familiar. Is that the guy from Kurzgesagt, to that YouTube channel? Wow, they really went all out, didn't they? That's that's big money right there. Unfortunately, there are not any funny clips of the Rostec head showing the phone off to Putin or something like that, it's like there was with the Yoda Phone 1. But there is this one bizarre clip where Putin actually uh, gifts the Yoda Phone 2 to Xi Jinping, uh, you know, the Chinese leader. Well, I guess it makes sense. You know, he's just giving the Chinese leader a product that's fully made in this country. Country, you know, sort of given back. Yeah, by country, I mean China. It was it was made in China. Anyway, there were some slight improvements with the second model. They increased the RAM and actually put a better processor in there. The back screen also was improved, and actually now it had touch control and was not of awful quality. However, once again, the device was not very successful. The reviewers did appreciate the improved specs in the screen, but on the flip side, they rated the camera poorly and as well pointed out the steep price. Yoda Phone 2 retailed for 500 euros yet again, and only about 96,000 devices were sold in the two years after the release. In 2015, Yoda Devices, the subsidiary of Yota that worked on a smartphone, was seeing massive changes in the company. The Russian governmental conglomerate Rostec essentially gave up on the project and sold their share to a Chinese company called Rex Global. Due to the project not making any money, Yoda Devices had a ton of debt, and essentially all the shareholders were dipping. Yota also got into a nasty lawsuit with a company that supplied e-ink screens for the phones. All of this in the end led to Yota devices being bought by a Chinese company called China Baoli, and Yota phone essentially became a Chinese brand. In 2017, the third generation of the Yota phone was released, this time fully developed and financed by the Chinese. The phone still kept the exact same double screen gimmick, but this time it was not even released in Russia. I don't know man, I just find that extremely ironic. Anyway, just like the previous generations, the phone was not very successful and in 2019, Yoda Devices was declared bankrupt. So now you guys might logically think that the failed and profitable releases of three phones in a row should have shown the Russian government that this double screen gimmick really is not worth it. Right? Well, actually no. This entire beating of the dead double screen horse gimmick only continued further. Actually, Alexei Navalny, a major Russian oppositional figure who you might have heard about a lot recently, he actually had a pretty good video on this. Essentially, there's this Russian governmental company called Rosnana, which is described as an innovation development institution. They say that their mission is to create a competitive nanotechnology based high tech industry in Russia, and the company is funded by taxpayer money. Anyway, whatever, just like Yota, Rosnana were trying to develop or possibly maybe they just borrowed Yoda Phone's epic e-ink screen technology and they tried to produce some devices of their own using it. They've actually invested 10 billion rubles of taxpayer money into this venture. 10 billion rubles of taxpayer money, like that, let that sink in. And what do they do with those 10 billion rubles? Well, there's been a few failed attempts to create ebooks and tablets, but their last creation was just the best. It was just hilarious. Here's the thing, Navalny had a debate with the head of Rosnana, in which he was calling the company out and essentially saying that Rosnano has created absolutely nothing that has ever made any profits and that they're just basically sucking out money from taxpayers. But in fact, the head of Rosnana begged to differ. He gifted Alexei some sort of product which was meant to completely blow his mind and prove that the 10 billion rubles were not wasted. And that amazing product was um, an iPhone 6 case within the e screen in the back that is meant to connect to, to the phone via Bluetooth and provide some sort of additional functionality. Uh, yeah. Essentially, they just decided to rip off the Yoda Phone's concept and make an accessory with Yoda Phone's functionality for a phone that people actually buy. Navalny made a video unboxing the device, and it's just hilarious. The video is called Unboxing a 10 Billion Ruble Gadget, and it's just so sad, man. Like, the case doesn't even want to connect to the phone properly, and the screen on the back seems to be completely broken and dysfunctional. You know, not only is it a complete joke that 10 billion rubles of taxpayer money was spent on this, but it's also just sad and kind of fun 
funny seeing how the so-called groundbreaking and innovative idea of the Yoda phone has been turned into this. Well, I guess at the end of the day, some corrupt CEOs have made good money off of this and, you know, guys, after all, that's all that matters in modern-day Russia. And I guess that's pretty much it for the story of the failed Russian smartphone, Yoda phone. Honestly, guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Literally every other month or so, Russian governmental officials show the president these random device prototypes they made that billions have been spent on, and they're usually just pathetic clones of already existing Western devices that never go anywhere. There's a ton of these, so perhaps if you guys like this video and if it does well, then actually I'll make a video reviewing some of these devices as well. Might actually even buy a real Yoda phone myself and try it out, who knows. But just trust me guys, this is far from over. The rabbit hole of awful Russian technological developments goes way, way deeper. Anyways guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video, I hope you guys did enjoy it, if you guys did, please make sure to slap the like on this video, also check out my Patreon link, the link is down in the description, donate to it, I would gladly appreciate it, it helps out my channel a ton. As well guys, if you want to support my channel, support me, then also go to the link down in the description to my YouTubes, buy yourself a little figurine, buy yourself a little souvenir, and also support my channel. And yeah guys, this is going to be pretty much it for today's video, the story of the Russian failed smartphone, I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.